Hello everyone, it is day seven of the Writing Institute. So let's go ahead and get our day started. Welcome, if you're new to my channel, my name is Marieli Sanchez and I'm a fourth grade teacher in South Florida. I am so excited for day seven. I cannot believe it's been a week and a half since we started this writing institute or a week ago we started, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so there are only two days left. Tomorrow and Friday is the celebration. So I'm gonna go ahead, get on in and see what we learned today. Here is our flight plan for today. We were greeted by this beautiful pen set wow just lovely and our first presenter was susan kohler and she has written all these books which i'll talk about more later we received her copy of dahlia in bloom and these are the handouts that we received from her she also had on sale the book that's there and in the afternoon we received this pen along with the shirt that we were asked to wear tomorrow and then this was our afternoon presenter. We had Alice Kawazoe again. She's so amazing. She started by showing us some kanji, which are Japanese characters. So she started by showing us the sign for woman and then the sign for man, but it has multiple meanings. And it's all about the subtlety and meaning of language. She ended with Kai Zen. So this is the kanji for Kai. And now she is drawing or writing the kanji for zen and kaizen is an important message that she ended her presentation with which i'll share more about later which has beautiful meaning and it's a message that i believe we all need to hear we just wrapped up day seven and if i look a little tired my apologies i've had a rough day today i woke up feeling super nauseous and I was most of the day feeling like that. I think it was a chicken Caesar salad that I had last night that was just not good. <sighs> it's been a day. But anyway, that did not deter from another wonderful day at the Writing Institute. Let's get started with first thing in the morning. So this morning we were guided by one of our facilitators in a mindfulness writing activity. She started by talking to us about an organization known as Mindful Kids Miami, which offers a variety of courses for teachers to learn mindfulness and how to apply it in the classroom. It's something that I've heard in the past. I haven't participated myself, but I'm definitely going to check into it. She actually recommended the self-compassion course to take first, and that sounds like something I'm interested in doing. So I'm going to get more information on that and see when I'll be able to participate in that kind of experience. So after that, she turned off the lights and they played a video and you heard the sound of the waves and there were the motion of the waves in the video but she had us close our eyes and she guided us through a body scan meditation where she started with just us breathing and noticing our breathing and then scanning our bodies from our toes all the way to our heads that was very relaxing the room was very quiet everyone felt really relaxed and then she went ahead and read a poem to us the title of the poem was how do you live your dash she read it to us and after doing that she had us think about how would we live the rest of our dash what things would we change what things would we not change how are we living our dash so that went ahead and prompted us to go into our notebooks and start writing and i wrote a little bit about that and then we went ahead and had different people volunteer to share then the school that we are having the writing institute had a fire drill and we knew about it ahead of time so we were preparing for that so we all took our belongings we went outside and after doing that we went into our next presentation which had to be virtual because the poor presenter was feeling sick and wasn't able to make it but what a trooper for her to zoom from her home where she is and be able to do her best in giving us all this information this morning the presenter is susan kohler who is the author of a couple of books including the complete k-5 through writing workshop models for teaching writing craft target skills dahlia in bloom which is a novel that she wrote for young readers and nobody kills uncle buster and gets away with it we actually got a copy of dahlia in bloom and at the end of her presentation she had the uncle buster novel ready for us to purchase for like ten dollars and some change and i went ahead and got a copy of it so here is dahlia in bloom and here is nobody kills uncle buster and gets away with it she promised there's no violence it's just an interesting mystery story so the title of her presentation today was creating craft in the classroom and she went over the first thing that we need to do as writing teachers in a writing classroom is to engage the learner and we do that in order to ignite the desire and belief 
How do we engage desire and belief in our students? We show them what good writers they are. So celebrating writing, which is what's been being said to us and repeated by multiple different presenters in different ways all this time, right? In the past two weeks, we need to engage and motivate our students by celebrating their writing and showing them that they are capable writers, that they have something to say and that it is important for them to say it. The first activity that she guided us on is on setting descriptions. So she showed us a picture and there are a couple different steps with this particular activity. So they gave us a sheet of white paper and the presenter told us to, in the center of the paper, somewhere in the center, to write five nouns that describe the picture. So I went ahead and I wrote my five nouns. So maybe one at the top, one a little bit under that, etc. So there were five. So I kind of tried to put it in fifths along the length of the paper. So that was the first step, list five nouns. The second step is to add one to two adjectives in front of the nouns. So we went ahead and did that for each of the nouns that we have selected. The third step was to write one action verb after the noun. Then step number four was to add an adverb, prepositional phrase, and or similes after the verb were appropriate. Then the last step that we needed to do was to go ahead and link all of those five sentences together so that it made sense. So we were turning it into a more cohesive piece. She said as we did that, we could add words, move words, move sentences, etc. Notice how that is the revision process right there. So we started with observing, then we started by drafting, and then we started to revise. We did take turns sharing our writing with each other so that we can give feedback and celebrate each other's writing. This is a picture activity that she does highlight in her book, The Complete K-5 through Writing Workshop. And it's a good exercise for the beginning of the school year so that you as a teacher can assess what skills your students already need and what skills you may need to review with them. This is particularly good with parts of speech for fourth grade and up, maybe even third grade, depending on your third graders. For lower grades, she said that she would recommend using the senses. So basically have the students list five things they can see. Notice that five things they can see are nouns. They may not know what they are, but you can go ahead and do it together with the students. She has done this activity in kindergarten, so this is something that is adaptable across grade levels. This activity helps students to see that they are capable of doing writing and that they can be successful with it. So it's a great way to build confidence, belief, and desire in our students through this activity. Now, what she does after this is she has the students think about a peaceful place because the picture that she showed us was of a river that she saw on a hike and she felt that it was very peaceful. So she took a picture of it and she used it as a teacher herself in her classroom. So because this is a peaceful place to her, the students then extended the writing by taking it to their notebooks and thinking of a place that was peaceful to them. She had them write about that peaceful place in their notebooks and go through the process of not just drafting, but also conferencing, revising, editing, etc. She then showed different examples of students doing the same activity to different pictures. And again, she stressed the importance of this type of activity because it allows students to have successful moments in writing and allows them to build motivation and belief. She went over two different pieces of writing to go over craft or no craft. So she read one piece and she had the students talk about it and then she read a different piece and then she had the students compare and contrast. The difference between the two writing pieces were that the second one had embedded definition, a simile, more vivid verbs, or you may call them strong verbs or descriptive verbs. And these all fall under descriptive attributes, which was the next part of her presentation. So she talked about descriptive attributes because sometimes students get stuck in using adjectives to describe something, but there's other ways that we can describe our writing or whatever we are writing about other than just using adjectives. Descriptive attributes helps kids think of ways to describe. Attributes don't just have to be adjectives, like I mentioned, and it gives more description to their writing. She also shared a list of different mentor texts that you can use to show students examples of authors that use descriptive attributes. Again, as you can see the connection, we're using mentor text, good writing, to teach writing to our students. So she had us participate in a descriptive attributes activity where she showed us a picture of a cactus and we had five different categories to describe that cactus. It was geographical information, textures, physical characteristics, abstract attributes, and comparisons. Then she had us take it to writing. Again, these activities that we are doing are activities that we are modeling so that we know how to implement it with our students. 
because we can easily use this activity in the classroom to show the students how they can use the scripted attributes to add more details to something. Yes, we're starting with pictures, but remember, pictures allow us to picture details and be able to find words to describe it. She then went on to talk about strong verbs and shared with us a list of mentor texts that show good examples of strong verbs. That's when we did another activity. This time, she showed a picture and the picture was of two students squatting by like a pond or like something that had water on the ground. So we were asked to come up with five strong verbs that describes the actions that are happening in the picture. So with this activity and with any other activity that you're using as many lessons to help students learn ways that they can add details and more descriptive writing, she talked about a couple of different steps. And these steps were used with the picture of the two boys. Name the skill, model the skill, then you do an interactive practice with the whole group, then you do interactive practice with a small group or a partner, then you have students share, and then you review the skill and allow for individual practice. So with this picture activity, she named the skill, which we are focusing on strong verbs. Then she modeled the skill by looking at the picture and using five strong verbs that describe the action that is happening in the picture. Then she gave us an independent practice by having us look at a different picture where we have to come up with five strong verbs. Then we allow some time for sharing, and then at the end we review the skill, and of course we can then take it to our own writing by maybe drawing a picture that shows action or bringing a picture in that shows action or something we were participating in that shows action, and then we can also use that as a springboard to writing in our notebooks. So the example that she shared that she did with her students is she had them go to their writer's notebook and draw a picture of an activity that is their favorite activity to do, and then write about it using strong verbs. Once they have finished their writing using strong verbs, students then went ahead and created a pop-up illustration that went along with the activity that they were writing about and then they added their writing piece on an index card to the bottom of the pop-up card so that it went along with the entire action verb story or strong verb story. The next skill that she was talking about was figurative language. And again, these are different descriptive attributes that she was taking the time to talk a little bit more about so that we knew how to implement it in the classroom and introduce it to our students. So that again, these skills build up and we can remind the students of the different ways that they can add more details and description to their writing. So of course, the next one was figurative language and we were focusing on metaphors. This one was really fun. She started with a poem titled Clouds. We read it and we discussed what the poem was actually about which in that case it was about clouds but the poem talked about sheep so the author was describing the clouds as looking like sheep so that's when she had us look at a chart of different objects and find comparisons things that we can compare those objects to so the first one was clouds and of course she already had sheep in there for us so that we knew the connection between the poem and what we were gonna do next and the next one was stars wind earthworm and book so we went ahead and added different comparisons Then she had us all share the different comparisons that we thought of so that maybe we get more ideas from each other to see how that is connected to planning. And then she had us pick one of those and write a sentence that was a metaphor sentence about that. But you needed to also give context so that the person reading it would know exactly what you were talking about. For example, I chose the word books. And one of the comparisons that I made about books is that they're portals. And this was a sentence that I came up with. My room is filled with portals sitting on magical bookshelves waiting for me to step on through. See? So we are using books, but we are transforming them into portals through a metaphor. And that is another way that we can encourage students to add descriptive details to their writing. The truth is that figurative language enriches writing. So after we wrote our sentences, we went ahead and had a couple people share their sentences out. Again, a way to share and celebrate writing. And the presenter also shared with us a list of mentor texts that show great examples of how authors use figurative language in their own writing. The next skill that she talked about was supporting details. In this one, we were looking at types of supporting details and there was a list of them. This section led us to an activity where we all had to write an expert paragraph using the different types of supporting details that were listed. First, we started with a claim, then we gave a general example, then a specific concrete example, then we continued with an anecdote about that, next we added descriptive details, and then we ended with an authoritative quote. We wrote our paragraph and then shared our writing with each other. 
Next, she went over the writing process and basically she said that oftentimes us as writing teachers spend more time on drafting, but not as much time on the act of revising and planning. And it's very important that we take students through the entire writing process. But remember that the writing process is not linear. It is cyclical and it goes backwards and maybe I go from here to this step and then I go back. So there's no actual order in which the writing process can occur because it depends on your flow of writing. She pointed out different strategies that are great for planning. One is rehearsing where you just have the students talk about the topic before they get started. And she said that is a very important skill to use, especially when they're writing a personal narrative because they have to talk about the story so that they get all their events in order. Also, when it comes to writing, sometimes we need to come up with the details first before we can plan what we're going to write. And this is similar to what I have done in the past with my students. So let's say we have a prompt and that the prompt is about bike sharing, which is something that we've done in the past. So before we even know how we're gonna organize our writing, we think about the topic and then we go ahead and start gathering all the details about that particular topic. Once we gather all the details, then we can group the details together into groups that make sense. So we're categorizing the details, we're classifying them, and then we're labeling each group and that will be our main idea paragraphs. So that is a great way to handle informational writing like expository writing. Another strategy for planning was list linking where the student thought about the topic and just listed a whole bunch of words that went along with the topic and then they maybe color coded the words that went together and maybe crossed off some words because they didn't need them because another word referred to it. So that is another way that you can plan for writing. List linking can also lead to the traditional outlining that maybe all of us have experienced while we were in school. She reminded us that expository is groups of related details, whereas narrative is chronological order. So that's when she segued into planners that she recommends for narrative writing. The first one she started with was storyboards, where students are quickly drawing pictures in order related to their story. And sometimes students may not necessarily know what to draw on their storyboard. So what she recommends is you tell the students to draw what happened first in box number one and draw what happened last in box number four, because you're dividing the paper into four parts and then the students can choose what two important events happen in the middle and put them in the correct order and that is how they can construct their storyboard so that they know how they're going to go ahead and write their narrative the last planner that she shared with us as it pertains to narrative writing is the bme planner which is beginning middle and end and it's sort of almost like an outline where you're listing what events happen at the beginning what events happen in the middle and what events happen at the end to help the students again plan for the writing that they will produce then she shared some information about drafting which i took a picture of revising and in revising she shared an example from a first grader she shared the first draft that the first grader did and then she told us after that he met with the teacher then he got feedback from fellow students and then he revised his writing and then she showed us a second draft and we can see how his writing improved through the act of revising. So again, just like we have mentioned with previous presenters, I can recall right now Kelly Gallagher, where he encouraged us to do flash revisions. So if you wanna know more about that, you should watch day five, where I talk about Kelly Gallagher and a little bit more about flash revision if you haven't watched that video yet. Then she talked a little bit about editing, and then she talked about publishing and different ways that we can do that. She ended by just reviewing some of our new Florida BEST best standards, and that was the end of her presentation. In the afternoon, we had Alice Kawazoe again. We had Alice on day five of the Institute and she came back today. So during our afternoon presentation with her, we were working on our Ubuntu piece. Mine was on my mom, so I finished it up and I'm looking forward to typing it and handing it to her because I really like how it came out. And then after everyone who wanted to share shared, Alice said, you know, Ubuntu has two meanings. It's not I am because of you, it's also I am because of us. And she encouraged us that, you know, our students, when they have this type of writing activity, they will think of one person that they think of is responsible for them being who they are. But eventually, as we build community in the classroom, right, and the students start to feel that connection with each other, they'll see the value that comes from being all together. So they'll start thinking about I am because of us, especially since one of our participants today share her writing and she goes okay this is hard to share but i'm comfortable sharing in here because we're all sisters and that's what's beautiful about this writing institute like you really get connected to the people that are in your group and it they're all amazing and i can't wait to have a little reunion and see all of them because the writing institute will have a reunion in the fall where we can see each other and maybe talk about how our year started and how we implemented the activities and the lessons that we created as a result of the institute so that's something that i'm really looking forward to then alice shared more about her life growing up 
and she talked to us about making ink and as she's doing it she was actually making ink she had an ink box she said what you do is you add some water and then you have an ink stick and you rub it back and forth and eventually it creates water because the box and the stick itself are ink but in solid form so she was doing that because she used a bamboo brush to teach us some kanji which are japanese characters she did this demonstration to show us that she actually learned to write first before she learned to read and it's something that her uncle helped her with so she first learned to write and then from there she learned to read and after that she created the meaning she did this entire presentation in order to let us know that the more we know about the nuisance of a language the more we understand the subtlety of meaning and that's when instead of having the language control us we control the language and that's what she was able to do as a child growing up, going through the whole entire process. And she's encouraging us to do the same, especially if we have students in our classroom that are learning a new language. She encourages us to keep that in mind as we are teaching the students in our classroom. Then we went on to read a poem by Amanda Gorman and the title of the poem was The Miracle of Morning. And she wrote it after a year since the pandemic started. The poem was absolutely beautiful. Then the presenter read the essay, the F word in teaching, and no, it's not the F word you're thinking of. The F word happens to be fear. And it was a powerful piece of writing. So then after we did that, she asked us to choose one line or one sentence from either piece and write it on a colored paper that they had given us. Then we were asked to get up and go find another group of people that had the same color paper that we did. And once we found them, we talked about the line that we had chosen or the sentence and why we had chosen it, what meaning it had to us. Basically, she was guiding us through what did we connect to in the reading. And then from there, of course, you can take it to writing. We didn't at this time, but she used it as a way to help us know that when we're teaching and we're using mentor tech or we're teaching using any kind of text, we have to make sure that we find ways that the students can connect to the text, to the reading, to the writing. And we do that by making sure that students see people that they can relate to, representation. And when that is not there, you can look at the plot and the theme of the story to see if the students can connect to it. Because the more a student can connect to literature, the more meaningful it is from them and the more meaning they're able to derive from it. She ended with two more kanjis and one of them is Kai and the other one was Zen. And Kai Zen, Kai means change, adjust, adapt. Zen means better or improve. She basically wanted to remind us that we as teachers need to look at how our students are growing over time, change over time. Our state test results just came out yesterday and a lot of teachers were learning about them today. So she said, listen, that test result is just a snapshot of one moment in a child's educational path. You have to look at the whole picture. You have to look at every way that the student has grown, all the increments that they have shown improvement. And that's what we need to focus on the Kaizen. So with that, I'm gonna leave you with focus on the Kaizen. How have we changed for the better? How have you changed for the better? What kind of improvements have you made? How do you plan to adjust and improve? Look at the increments. Think of the big picture. Where are we now? And what are the next steps? Don't just dive into what we need to do, right? Don't just, you know, start saying, okay, what do I need in order to get a high score? No, where are you now and what is the next step? That's what we need to focus on, Kaizen. All right, friends, that is day seven of the Writing Institute. If you made it this far to the video, go ahead and put a waves or water emoji to go with a meditative theme that we started the day with and we ended the day with. So I hope you enjoy coming along with me. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought or any questions you may have or leave an emoji. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications so you don't miss any future videos. I hope you have a beautiful magical day and don't forget to smile. Hello dreamers, wishers, and magical thinkers. Thank you so much for making it to the very end of this video and for showing your support. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking on my picture down here. You can also check out my latest videos here and here. Don't forget to believe in the magic that's inside you because you are capable of great things. See you next time.